Welcome to PayPal's new SDKs, A First Look. My name is Sid Maestri, and I am a developer evangelist with the x.commerce group at eBay, and my focus is on PayPal's APIs. So uh, today we're going to talk about these new SDKs that we're deploying, and I want to talk first about uh, how we're building these. We're using an auto-generation process from our existing WSDLs. Now, WSDLs uh, stands for a Web Service Description Language. It's basically an XML file that explains what all the objects are that help construct an API call for PayPal. And we're using these to auto-generate these SDKs for our merchant APIs, which include our Express Checkout and Direct Credit Card Processing APIs, as well as the Button Manager and all of our adaptive APIs. This first round, we are focusing on three languages uh, to support, which are PHP, Java, and .NET. And our main goals are to make the process easier for developers uh, who are getting started to configure their API calls, um, make things less complex for them when they actually make an API call, and also remove any platform dependencies on other libraries, which was, white, which was uh, quite common with uh, Java. Now, if you want to get uh, started with this, we actually have our SDKs up on a forum. Uh, these are beta, so we're just asking the community to test these out, give us feedback. Uh, you can find them at this bit.ly URL, PayPal New SDK. And you can download and install this on your server to test it out. You might want to use your local server for doing that. Um, when we talk about easy configuration, uh, we allow you to configure multiple API credentials and also connection information, configure your service endpoints, and any logging information. And this is all contained within one file called the SDK underscore, underscore config.ini file, which is stored in the config directory. Real easy to find. Put all your credentials in there. We actually have some sample credentials so that when you download the SDK and try to play with it, you don't even need to put in any sample uh, sandbox credentials. You can just use the ones that are there initially. Now this is what the SDK underscore config.ini file looks like. You can see we've got our API credentials along with our app ID. You've got your connection information and also we have our endpoints and also beneath this we'd have some information about how we want to handle our logging. Now when we talk about hiding complexity, in the past you had to worry about what format your request and responses were um, taking place uh, with the API. You'd have to say I'm going to be sending JSON or a name value pair or SOAP or even XML and then you'd want to tell what format you wanted to receive that back in. You also uh, needed to set up your HTTP methods to actually make the API calls and once the uh, results were returned, you had to parse through those. And uh, it was very manual for a lot of developers. So we've taken an object-oriented approach so that you can build your payload as an object, pass it into a single method, and then get a response back. And everything is hidden behind the scenes, all the complexity. So it's really easy for developers to start working with one API. And it's going to be consistent across all of our different APIs, the way that you interact with it, the way that you configure it. It. So if you understand merchant APIs, it'll be really easy for you to use our adaptive or button manager APIs as well. So let's do a little code breakdown so you can see what these new um, objects look like and what these methods look like. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you'll include some files here. We have three files that you need to include. I've actually set a path up to the lib folder and inside of that lib folder there's a services folder that has uh, in this example adaptive payments and we need to include the adaptive payment service I also am including a logging manager and our constants PHP file which stores information like what our redirect URL should be next we're going to actually create some objects for our request the two objects we're, we're creating on this slide are in bold. There's the request envelope and there's the receivers list. 
Now each object has a constructor method which um, may or may not require some initial values. Um, for example, the request envelope requires one parameter be passed and it is the country code. It also needs to be a string, so we're just passing that in initially and setting that new uh, request envelope to a variable called request envelope. Next, we're going to set up our receiver list. Now this is a little more complex. A receiver list is actually an, ar is an array of receiver objects. So what you see here is I'm looping over my receiver emails from a form post and I'm setting the receiver email amount and whether it's the primary receiver, true or false, um, in that receiver object and then after I've looped over that and created that array, I'm then going to pass that array of receivers into the receiver list. Now that I've got my two objects, I want to initialize my pay request. Now the pay request receives uh, several parameters in its constructor. One is the request envelope. The next parameter is the action type. The third parameter is the cancel URL. The fourth parameter is the currency code. The fifth is that receiver list object we're passing in. And the sixth is a string, which is our return URL. After I initialize my pay request object, I can set additional attributes. In this example, I'm setting the sender email in that pay request object. There's many other attributes that you can set, but this is just one example. Now my payload is complete and I'm ready to pass that into my actual pay method. So I create a service object and then I call the pay method on that service object and I pass in my new pay, pay request object, which I like to refer to as the payload. And what that returns is a response. Once I get my response, I can parse through that. I can simply call different objects inside of that response and I can pull out the values. In this example, I'm pulling out the acknowledgement code out of the response envelope and I'm setting it to be all uppercase so I can do a comparison. And if it's successful, then I want to display the pay key that is returned in the response. Now you can go and get your own API credentials now that you've gotten up to speed on this. Uh, just go to developer.paypal.com, click on the API credentials, and from there you can get the username, password, and signature and place them into the SDK underscore config.ini file. Now remember that your application ID for the sandbox is the same for everybody. So what is currently inside of that configuration file is the sandbox application ID and you can just go ahead and leave that the way it is. We are planning on supporting additional languages um, because we're auto-generating these SDKs. We actually have the uh, ability to add additional languages and have those become part of the build process. We're also planning on supporting other additional eBay APIs in this build process and over time we'll be phasing out the old SDKs. If you're currently using any of our older SDKs and you don't need to switch over to these new SDKs, you can continue using the old ones, but over time you may want to consider adding these new SDKs um, because they will contain the latest um, changes to the APIs. How you can help? Uh, if you want to get involved, you can download the SDKs and try them out now. Just go to that bit.ly URL slash PayPal new SDK. It's a forum posting where we've got links to all the different SDKs you can download in the three languages we're supporting. You can post feedback and suggestions through this forum. Also, if you find any issues, you can open up an issue at our GitHub account github.com slash paypal x slash sdks and that way we can track any problems people are having uh, implementing the sdks. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this screencast and we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.